guys, here's what we're gonna do for this particular project. It's gonna be a real simple one. This is a one-man operation here. Basically, what we're gonna do, as you can see, if you take a look here, I've got the existing concrete patio in front of the house. Then I have a garage door, side door, that I wanna adjoin these two together because uh, it's kind of a hassle to step down then step back up you know to get in and out you know where you want to go so what i'm going to be using here is i've got the two by six plastic from pro pro line makes this stuff i don't really care for it however because it's actually a true six inch it'd be better if it was really five and a half to marry you marry, marry it with real wood but it's going to work for this so you can see the depth I've got, it's pretty high. So I'm gonna use two by six. I can get away with a four inch slab here, no problem. But we're gonna set it up with six. We'll use a thickened edge to get down to native. Then we're gonna build up the middle to four with some road base. The reason we're not just gonna build up the entire area four inches is because we could get erosion out from underneath the walkway at some point in time. So we'll leave, leave a thickened edge all the way down to native on both sides. So let's get down to business. All right, so I know where my start point was going to be at the edge of that door. So I just went ahead and set that without taking any measurements. I just knew I wanted to go parallel with the patio straight out of the garage from that door. So I set that stake first. And then uh, since this board is long enough, I just measured off of the um, patio to make sure I was parallel with it. Now, because this patio is sloping from left to right, and then my door is higher than the patio, I'm going to have a swell here. Now, getting this, uh, now if it was a 2x6, I wouldn't be just pushing that form down like that. I would have had to cut it. Now, if you take a look at that form, the top of that farm and then you can see the string line across the top the string straight but if you notice the form it's concaved that's the beauty of plastic really you can make it do what you want to do without cutting individual pieces of wood to fit break points because what we have here is a break point I wanted to go to the top of the concrete over here and also I wanted to go to the top of concrete here. So this existing patio is sloping from right, right to left. So what that means is we have a low point right along here, along the outside edge of the existing patio. And I've just, I followed that by running the six foot level across. I do have slope towards the camera as well. And away from the building so basically what we're gonna have is a, a drainage path that follows this area here off of the patio away from the house away from the garage all the way down this edge it's gonna flow downhill in that direction as you can see where that trampoline is it's gonna all go that direction and there's somebody at the gate right now and I have auto gates there so I'll mess with that next all right so you don't want to cut when you have a 2x6 or 2x4 plastic reusable forms you want to try to avoid cutting them so I had some scrap pieces um, and I utilized that this piece I just found I only had to cut about four inches off so I was fine with that now if I had to cut a full 12 footer to make a four footer that would be bad so we're not going to do that in some cases you're going to have to you know use wood with your plastic if you don't have a lot of short scraps of plastic laying around this plastic i can get a lot of use out of i could probably use this you know 30 40 times if i'm really careful with it now i'm not going to oil it here and you'll see that when we strip it at the end, why I should have oiled it. There's just a couple spots that stuck. And this, some of this is brand new. Here comes the road base. s, &S is delivering this for me. Head in and in back right here. Yeah.
Uh, the wind's blowing right at me too. Let's see if it hits how much dust this baby kicks up. Tell them to go forward, Doug. Tell them to drive forward a little. Yeah, go forward. So now I'm just bringing in the road base. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna compact it all at four inches all the way across from the concrete to the form. And then what I'll do after I compact is I'll dig out the perimeter all the way down to native. So I'll have a thickened edge all the way around. Just Sometimes it's just easier to go ahead and compact the whole thing and just dig out the um, gravel again on the edges on a small area. On a large area that's a lot deeper, you'd, try to, you'd want to avoid compacting in the footing. So here's Michaela and Brownie. The, the, our dog out here, Michaela's helping out. The dog loves water, so he's out here too. So you notice I use a two by four there. That saved me from cutting into the plastic. It's looking good. I'm gonna run a, a plate compactor over that, but you could use a hand stomper if you're putting base in. If you're putting over old native that's been sitting there a while. Don't even mess with it, man, because it ain't getting no harder unless you disturb it, of course. But oh, undisturbed native is nothing but the best. Brownie got wet, so that's why he's wet. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry up, put the plate on it, and then I'll go for it. Then I'm going to redig the edges out a little thicker after I compact. Anyway, stay tuned. Let's get it Bye, on. Bye, guys. So during this process, you're gonna to have to wash your dog too. And that's when it comes in handy, having a wheelbarrow on site. And this is well water. Never seen daylight Hi, in thousands of years. Finally coming to the surface. Guys, I'm older now. You probably saw me like four or five years ago. When I was five or four. Um, now I'm nine. And yeah. So now I'm older. Not yesterday. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, that dog's getting clean now. That's the good news. He's a puppy and his name's Brownie. He's, I, uh, I think he's like, how old is he? He's 11 months. Yeah, he's a puppy still, so. But he likes water, it looks like. Yeah, his brother likes water too. We had puppies, six of them. And um, they pretty much got all adopted, and this is the only puppy we're keeping. Because we have like um, two dogs, two cats, and one fish. My hermit crab died like two weeks ago. And yeah, his name was Krabby Patty. It's a weird name, but um, my dad named him that. Oh, uh -oh he go. jumped out of the water. Wow. Here's Brownie. Oh, what's He's going on here? Bundled up. Mwah. Yeah, it looks like he's ready to go to sleep. He had a rough day. We played fetch with him. He went on the trampoline. Um, he was helping us work, and then we put him in the wheelbarrow to get him all clean. Cause if he went in the house, then he, then he would um make a lot of trails, and it would be wet and muddy in the house. So yeah, so that's, that's why a we didn't idea. go in the house. That's almost mandatory. Oh yeah, and then, then I have a hill that you can sled on. It's really fun. But yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm yeah. like, I by look the way, that. have you guys heard about my quad? Um, it hasn't been working, so we took it to the quad shop. That's why. Yeah, we'll have to look at that later. Yeah, well, I'm going to go put this little one to bed. Bye, guys. All right, see you later. All right, we've got all the base in there. Now we just have to compact. Once I compact the entire area, I'll let this water soak in here overnight. I'm gonna compact, then I'm gonna dig out, redig that just the edge a little bit, just to give it that thickened edge, so we get back down to the native. Uh, in case I never backfill around here, I don't want it to erode out from underneath it. 
they're not really trying to build them. Now, if I was building a bridge, then I would want, you know, to dig out from under it. But in this case, uh, I just want to, you know, this is not going to be the bridge area. I'm going to do a bridge over there somewhere at some point in time. Now that I have the base in there and wet down, we're ready to compact. I'm going to compact. I'm going to run the comp plate compactor over it two times, and that should be good enough. Then we'll start the doweling procedure. Dig out the perimeter. If you notice, I'm taking a lot of that dirt around the perimeter. I'm throwing it into the middle. And then I'll just recompact. All right, come back. Compaction's complete. Let's take a close up look at it. So you can see we're all the way down on the bottom, on the outside edge here. It just helps ensure you're not going to get erosion out from underneath the edges. So now what we're doing is we're drilling in some dowels. We did two, two dowels into the garage foundation and two into the patio. Drill and drive. No epoxy needed. This will just help from the uh, concrete becoming uneven at the entrances. Well, that's ready to pour. Here's what we got. We got two dowels six inches in bed into the foundation, one on each side. Then on the patio, same thing, six inch in bed. Drill and drive, no epoxy. And then we got three, three eighths inch Owens Corning pink bar running the length of it. It's going to want to try to crack. You don't need a lot of cross members on something like this, on a narrow span like this. It's going to want to crack the shortest distance. So it's going to always try to crack across. So if you have your bars this way, you're um, holding it together when it does crack. Hey, how's it going? Three yards extra, huh? That's a lot, a lot of concrete. concrete mix we're using is a one inch minus 3000 psi with a fiber mesh additive and that helps with your shrinkage cracks and then all the bars you see in there that's more of the structural integrity of it i've got the four foot milwaukee red stick as my screed i'm just using a standard flat square shovel to move it around because I like multi-purpose tools, you know. I don't like to carry out a whole bunch of different tools like come along, shovels. One tool that does more than one thing is what I like. So, so far what we've done here, we got the concrete in the hole. We've rotted it off or screeded it. Um, we vibrated the entire edge, consolidate the concrete and get rid of the rock pockets when we strip. 
now we've hit it with the three foot wood bull float. Now I'm going to the four foot magnesium bull float. This step's really not totally necessary. Changing materials on the bull float or getting a bigger one. You could work with this. Just go around the edge just by hand, edge it. Just keep working it by hand. Something this small, but I've got all these tools, so I'm gonna use them. I've got a little swell right here. That's why I tried to end the bull float on this lowest point. Because if you go right here, you can see it doesn't touch. It doesn't touch in the middle. I'm gonna go around the edges right now, hand float, get it flat, and then I'll run the walking edger on it. No, no, no. Franny, come here. Franny, no, he's going to the car race. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> get over here. I had a feeling of that. <laughs> Maybe we should all put our handprints. Well, it'll probably be the last time he does that. Okay. We waited about uh, 30 minutes after we got to this point. Now we're going to use the walking edger. This is a half inch radius. It comes with a square piece of metal like this, you know, like a solid angle iron. But the first thing you want to do is cut that piece out. That way you can get your pole all the way down like that. Or however you want it. But you can reach a lot further by removing this piece of metal right here. And here. Right, here's the stamp we're going to be doing. Let's take a look at these. So each color has a little bit different pattern or texture on them. The idea of them being colored, that way when you're laying them down, you're not repeating that same pattern next to one another. So you go, you know, like I've got here, red, yellow, blue, then you'll go red, yellow, blue again, something like that. But let's see how wide these are. They're, they're two foot, two foot squares. And so we got four feet. And this is almost five feet. So the question is, is do we center that four feet and have six inches on both sides? Or do we start on one edge and just have one foot? That's, I think we'll do it like this. Just like this, right over there. So you're gonna get you're gonna get halves, yeah. So we'll just lay them just like this, and just slide it right over there. And we staggered it. You could you could go straight straight line all the way down, but this is a little more forgiving this way. That way, if your mats get off and it starts doing this. You're not going to see it too much when you stagger them. So you can go long, really long runs. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, meandering around. Because it's not going to be as uh, noticeable. Although you're still going to have this direction. Right here, though. So here's the cleanup process. I've waited till the concrete got somewhat crusty. And then I've just swept off the excess. And then there's still some residual that I'm just going to hit with a sponge and water. 
that's the easiest way to do cleanup. Forget about the plastic and all that prep. An area like this, just sponge it. Okay, so now I've just filled up my one gallon pump up sprayer that has the liquid release in it. It's a clear liquid release. I sprayed on the concrete. Also, I sprayed it on the mats themselves on the initial start. But after we get going, I only spray the concrete. And the reason I started in the middle, because I wanted to line up on that control joint that I put in. I didn't want to split one of my stones, you know, down the middle with a random joint. So that's why I actually started there. So my mats line up off of that control joint. Either that, there's another option. You start anywhere you want. Then you go ahead and saw cut the next day on one of the lines of the mats. Now I have a roller that I'm touching up the joints with. But it, look, it looks good. I mean, I just kind of eyeballed these lines down the middle because they're staggered. It's They look perfectly in line. All right, we're waiting on that concrete to dry right now. But I did want to show you my new tool. This is a little mini generator. 3,600 watts at its uh, peak. 1,800 watt constant. It's got some neat little features on here. It's got your strap to carry it around. Also, you can lock the batteries in position so no one can take them out. Put a padlock through here. And what else do we got? We've got two plugs. Last night I ran my I ran my mini fridge all night long last night. And this it still had power left in it. You can charge these batteries just by plugging it into the wall. You've got a USB port and you've got a C so you can try your phone, laptops. All those types of things nice little tool this baby does it all and it's quiet day after the pour we're gonna remove the forms and see um, how that vibrator worked Wow it works great let's take a close-up on that the vibrator definitely did the trick, I'd have to say. Look at that. And that's big rock. The big one inch minus, you know. Hard to get to come away that clean. Oh little chunk stuff right there. Little chunk. I should have put some oil on these, but yeah, right there. 
not bad not bad at all pretty clean as you can see I, mean, I like it I could patch that up throw a little patch on there maybe and if you patch it when it's this fresh the concrete it sticks real well without any adhesives or anything it becomes one with the concrete when you catch it early on a patch Yeah, came away real nice. Look at that, I got a little ledger there too. I could throw some brick on top of that or something. Or I'll just backfill with some decorative gravel in this area. Something like that. All right. Well, that about wraps this up for now. It could be a lot more, really. I could, um, come back here in about 30 days stain this thing i could do each section a little sh different shade of stain color and really make it trick tricked out but i don't know we'll see we'll see if i if i want to do that or not later but it's a possibility anyway thanks for watching have a good one